Welcome to the William Morris Gallery. It is a Grade II listed property, which dates back to the 1740s. It was always a domestic dwelling, right up to 1900. Many of the historic features of the house can still be seen. The marble flagstone entrance, and the Spanish chestnut staircase. William Morris was a famous Victorian designer, campaigner and poet. His connection with this house began when he was 14, in 1848, and his recently widowed mother relocated here with her nine children. For much of the time his family lived here, Morris was away at boarding school but he wrote to his family here regularly and returned home for the holidays. Later, he attended Oxford University, where he met the famous painter, Edward Byrne Jones. They would both come here in the holidays and sit happily sketching and reading in the gardens. Today, this gallery offers an introduction to Morris's incredibly varied career. Too often, his different activities as a designer, entrepreneur, socialist, poet, and defender of historic buildings are admired or studied in isolation from one another. We wanted to present the whole picture from the start, and our galleries explore each aspect in more depth. We have the largest collection of objects relating to William Morris in the world. If you come and visit, you will find examples of his designs. There are textiles, ceramics, furniture and the books he designed. In this gallery that I'm standing in, we explore how Morris & Co products were made using traditional techniques. As we've mentioned, Morris was himself a hands-on craftsman and refused to introduce any technique to his workshops until he fully understood the process himself. This could take a lot of time and made his products expensive, but he was not willing to compromise on quality. For inspiration, Morris looked to nature but also to examples of medieval craftsmanship and to the treasures from other cultures. For example, the colours and patterns of Indian textiles and carpets from Persia influenced his designs. For someone who has been so widely researched and written about, the one area that remains underexplored is Morris's role as a successful businessman and entrepreneur. That's not to imply that the firm was an instant hit. Our galleries show how it took decades to build up the business. But by the time Morris died in 1896, he had created a strong brand identity. 
and his products graced the homes of the fashionable and avant-garde around the world. Underneath the designs is a serious message. Morris rebelled against the age in which he lived, when mass production and cheaply made goods were flooding the market. He believed that everyone should have beauty in their life, and so he set out to making beautiful and useful items for everyday use. Instead of cheap but badly made goods, he wanted to make furnishings which were designed by artists, created by craftsmen and made with the best possible materials. Morris was nearly 50 when he went a step further. He crossed the river of fire and became a revolutionary socialist. This was not just about creating better products. Morris took to the streets to campaign for social equality and to end the capitalist system upon which his own prosperity depended. Why did he feel this way? How did he go about it? What did it cost him? We explore his politics in a dedicated space at our gallery. We hope you will visit to find out more. We are a 10-minute walk from Walthamstow Central in Lloyd Park on Forest Road. We have a tea room, shop and also host events and exhibitions. Please visit our website to find out more or don't hesitate to get in touch.